Okay. I want to talk for a minute about something that came up for a few minutes on something that came up on a survey for Tracy. And I want to talk a little bit about the conversation I had today with Dan because I think it teaches us all stuff we need to learn about what is and isn't marketable title and what happens in escrow because I learned some things about escrow today. Okay. Is that all right? We take 10 or 15 minutes to do that. Okay. So let's talk about this thing in Sonora. We'll start with that because that's probably easier. So I have a coworker. We'll call her Christy. Christy called me a couple weeks ago and said, my mom's looking for a house in Sonora. She says, I'm worried that my mom doesn't know what she's doing. Would you please, when my mom picks out a property she wants to buy, would you please look at it for me and make sure there's no boundary or title issues that we need to be worried about? And I told Christy, I'll take no problem. Am I going to charge an ex coworker for something like that? No. We'll just do it. She worked with me at Odell. Okay. So she sends me the title report today. Danny and I looked at it. Everything looks good. Pretty good. There was one thing I didn't like in the title report. We can talk about it. Well, let's just talk about what I didn't like in the title report. So remember, the title report is an offer to insure the, the property, right? Does everybody remember we talked about that? The title report is the title company's offer to insure your land. Okay, and they had a statement in there that basically said any easement for anything funky that might be on the property. That was not included in the coverage. Danny's going to just pull it up so we can read it. What do you mean any easement? I'm going to read it. Okay, so it's any easement for public utilities, water lines, drainage ditches, other poles, lines, wires, pipes, pipelines, or other things, including overhead utility installations, other than a building through or across the said land. So like, like basically anything that we have to do government that, wise. No, like, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the government. It's easements for anything right, right. that might running be on gas or right. running water. So here's the problem with this insurance off this insurance policy. Danny, what could you drive through that exception in coverage? A submarine. It's huge. That's a huge gap in the coverage. They're saying any easement for anything. Right. It so isn't covered. Oh. That's a huge blanket to call. I call it a blanket. It's a blanket exception. So what's the point of, they're, they're t like, they're not even covering. Exactly. So what do you tell the insurance company when they give you a policy that looks like that? No. Yeah, no, take that out. Or I got to go get yeah. a different title company. I, I almost feel like that's, like... They should be able to be held legally for, for it's tricking people into doing it. It's this. sneaky. I don't like it's it. It's tricking. It's sneaky. I don't like it. So it's guess what I told, people. guess what I told Christy? Mm -mm. Don't sign it. Tell them yank number seven out. Is that like a standard thing for that they do that? This particular, particular title company, company has that boilerplate wow. probably in every title report. Do you guys remember I told you before title insurance is basically worthless if you're not dealing with a good company? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's so the point? Yeah. they got a yank number seven. Or she's got to get a because different title company. So what happens? To say they they come and they need to like run something. So let's property, just say she's just out she's out in her front yard and and she builds a a, a pottery barn in her backyard. She builds a pottery barn in her backyard and like one day you know Joe Blow Petroleum Company shows up and says, "Hey, we got a eight inch gas line on your pottery barn and we need to replace it. So you got to move your pottery barn." And she says, oh, well, I didn't know that. I, if I'd have known that, I would have put my pottery bond there. So she goes and she submits a claim to her title company. She says, hey, you didn't tell me there was an 8-inch gas line and an easement on my property. And the title company is going to say, oh, see exception 7, you're not covered. What you're going to have to pay for them. Yeah, yeah, what I don't like about 7 is it's broad and open-ended. It's not specific. Okay, Why so, wouldn't that cost fall on the, the utility company that needs to replace it? Because they have an easement. They have a right to maintain that line, and you put a pottery barn on it. It's not the utility company's mm. fault. Okay, now, here's the thing. If the title company, if the title company, instead of that language on number seven, if they said, if this exception number seven said, we are not covering the eight, the gas line easement on the back 10 feet of your lot, that I don't have a problem with, because that's specific. Mm -hmm. And now I can tell the lady, don't put a pottery barn in your backyard because you know there's an easement. The problem with this is, do you know what it covers or doesn't cover? No, it's vague and open-ended. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it's it's specifically a back door that the title company built in their policies to not pay claims. Okay, all right. So that's not even the big problem. 
So Danny and I start looking at this. So we're, we're I'm like, okay, no problem. Have the title company take seven out. And then she's on a, she's on a 1960 subdivision map. It looks like the corners are set. I said, hey, Danny, let's check and make sure that her house doesn't violate setback or encroach or uh, the pro cross over the property line. It's called checking for encroachments. I can't find my pins. So Danny and I do that. So good news. Guess what? Her house is right here. Couldn't be in a better spot. It's not close to the property lines or the setbacks. Okay, but we start looking around and we look at the neighbor's house. And the neighbor's house does this. It's a huge house. Wow. And there's some kind of courtyard thing that comes out here like this. And there's like a barbecue pit in the middle. And I don't even know who uses that. I don't know if it's hers or his. Okay. Is it like a community? I don't know, but there's no fence here. Huh. Okay, so I called Christy and I said, man, Christy, I said, you need to tell your mom not to buy that property. Is that why it was priced so cheap, maybe? I said, you need to tell your mom not to buy that property because we got problems. And until we figure out if this... Now, I don't know for a fact that the building's over the line because you don't know that until you do a survey. But when I see something like this with the tax assessor data, Danny, how does it make me feel? Nervous. Really scared. Okay? Really scared. So I called Christy and told Christy, you need to have your mom tell her agent to tell the, the seller's agent that she's not buying the house until the seller figures this out. Okay? Christy says, man, I'm really glad I had you look at that. Two problems. I said, okay, what are the two problems? She said, number one, my mom doesn't have an agent. The seller's agent is acting as her agent as well. Oh, okay? dirty, 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 dirty. Number dirty. two. Sorry. My mom just went into escrow yesterday. Yikes. Okay, so why let's, would she do that? Because people don't know any better. This is why people need to call me. So she signed because she wanted to buy it? Okay, so I, I called my attorney, buddy Dan, and I said, hey, here's the situation. Can you tell me a little bit about what exactly is escrow and what are this lady's options? Okay, so I want to tell you what Dan told me today because I was learning things today. Okay, so here's the first thing I want to say. Anytime you have a realtor representing both sides of a transaction, you should be really nervous because they're either for one or the other. There's very there's a large possibility of conflict of interest there. And I tell you what, this when when a realtor does that, I don't recommend that realtors do that. When realtors do that, and there's court cap reg cases from California about this. When you decide as a realtor to represent both sides in a transaction, you have a very very high duty fiduciary duty that you owe to the buyer. Right. 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 Because the judge, the judges, so they, they've decided in California not to make that illegal. In some places it's illegal. You can't represent both sides. But in California, we've said we're going to let agents do that. But the standard that the agent has to meet in that case is much, much higher. The standard to the buyer for situations just like this. So look, if this agent is, and I don't know who it is, if this, hopefully it's not our next door neighbor. If this agent is representing the buyer and the seller and he knew about this encroachment and didn't disclose it, He's in big, big trouble. Because she can back out now because... Well, he owes her, the, the he owes her a very was, high duty of care. Well, right? if she wanted to back out, she okay. should be able so to. So why do people let... Why do realtors and sellers want to only to have the seller's agent represent both sides? There's a reason. There's a financial reason why well, they, they want to do that. They get commission off both. Okay. In a normal transaction, you pay 3 or 4% to the buyer's agent and 3 or 4% to the seller's agent. Why does the seller not want the buyer to have an agent? That gets paid by the seller, not by the buyer. So, if I'm selling property to Danny, i got to pay Monique 3%. She's my agent. I also have to pay Vanessa 3%. She's Danny's agent. Oh, if I, I get Yes. It comes out of the seller's pie because he's the one with the equity usually, right? So if I get rid of Vanessa, if I tell Danny, Danny, you don't no, need Danny. Vanessa. Just have Monique be your agent. Okay? What did I just do to my commission as a seller? D doubled. I cut it in half. Or wait, oh, okay. Yeah. Because now instead of being 8% or 6%, it's 3 or 4% because I cut you out. Um, That's why sellers like to do that. Yeah. But hey, how could a seller get a buyer to use the same agent? Because this buyer doesn't know any better. She's mm. just somebody's grandma, and she don't know. And she's not, yeah. And like, look, why is it really important for, this is a classic example of why the buyer needs their own agent. 
Because what did we find here? Mm -hmm. There's a problem. Now, now I've found a problem. But there's also agents that aren't even doing this part Okay, of that's true. But though. here's the problem. So now, Christy's mom is going to go back to her double duty agent and say, hey, I think I found a problem. And do I trust that that agent isn't going to try and talk her into just buying the oh, same? Oh, yeah. It's, right? it's fine. Yeah, because he's got a conflict. Build. They'll never build. Right. Or Landon doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, right? Because, like, look, he doesn't get a check until what? Closes. That's right. This is why you get represented by an independent agent when you're a buyer. Okay, now, let's talk about this. This thing's in escrow. Okay, so here's what part of what I learned today. When you go into escrow, and I should know this because I bought a house. So I'm no better than Christie's mom. Okay, when you go into escrow, when they open escrow, that means you have entered a contract to purchase the house, yeah. and typically you put down some deposit money. Okay? Now, depending on how that contract is structured, there's some get out of jail free cards for the buyer. Like, so like information that wasn't disclosed. Yeah, at the time so like, well, when Monique and I bought our house, we got a, ho we got a house inspection. And I had a right to back out of the deal if the there were things that I didn't yeah. like in the inspection didn't report. We, get out of the we backed out of the house because Why? we got we got an inspection report back. The fence was falling down. There was wiring issues. And they didn't want to fix it. And all they didn't want to fix it. it. So I said, me. Okay. So now in that case, I walked away from my deposit money because that's how that contract was structured. Okay. So I told Dan. I said, Dan, what's her options here? He said, Well, you got to find out what her off ramps are. Okay. And so, pay to do all this research? No, I'm just helping Christy out. It wasn't that much. Danny took us what? 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes plus a call to Dan. Okay? And I, and I learned something. She'll refer later. Yeah. So, Dan said, look, you got to look at her contract and find out what her exits are. Okay? And one of two possibilities here, either three possibilities. She gets an exit and she loses her deposit. She gets an exit and she keeps her deposit. That's the best case. Or there is no exit. There's got to be given that information. Well, if there's no exit, then she's probably got to sue to get out. That's baloney. I'd I'd we just don't know. Well, so <laughs> here's what happens. If this <laughs> agent represented both sides and gave her a contract with no out, Dan's going to sue But him. he did not disclose all the information on the Listen, property. That right there, that he, contract's no good. Should he have given her a contract so with no out? if you ask me, that contract's no good because you well, didn't disclose so, but, all the information. You, where's that going to end up? But what if he didn't know her? It's going to end up in court. Is it a possibility he couldn't know? No, yeah, there's a very strong possibility the seller doesn't but know there's an encroachment. it's still his obligation. No, the to agent. Sue. It's still his duty to do to, yeah. to do that. He has Danny, every... how long did it take you and me to figure out there might be an encroachment? Two minutes. So uh, my argument to Christy's mom is... Especially when there's a place out there with free checks. Yeah. My argument to Christy's mom is your agent had an obligation to check on this. Yeah. That's what oh. I would say. And if it wasn't disclosed in very... that contract, to me, that contract yeah. is not so, good. We'll see what happens. I'm waiting to hear back. Now, here's the next thing that's going to... The next thing's going to happen is this realtor's going to call me. Or her. She could be her. What do you mean? What are you talking about? They're going to be all ticked off because I just did what to their deal? Squashed it. I just blew time. it up. But also... Blew up their deal. You also may have a potential survey out of this. Well, I think we need to go knock on the door of that big house listen, right there. Who am I looking out for? The client. Yeah. Christy's mom. Yeah. Right? Is the agent looking out for Christy's mom? Probably not. But they need a lot line adjustment. And so I right? guess what? When that realtor gets... Yes, they need a lot line adjustment. When that realtor gets nasty with me on the phone, you know what I'm going to tell her or him? I'm going to hang up. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I'm looking out for my int the interest of my friend's like mother, you not your commission. Well, that's what right? they should be doing. Yeah, and I'm tell them, like... You should be the one doing this, not me. I'm going to just tell the lawyer up front. Yeah. Okay? All right. So, some interesting things to learn there. Okay. So, if we're helping a client in a real estate deal. I did learn today, though, that if you are in escrow mm -hmm. and you die, mm -hmm. that it will still go through. Okay. So, part of what this part of what we're learning here is if we're helping a client manage some real estate transactions. So, the whole premise behind our company is we help people identify understand and mitigate risk in real estate transactions so one of the things that you got to be really careful about is you got to look at that real estate contract before they go into escrow and say hey if we found if we find boundary or land title problems do they got a way out well my question right? to them at that point is you should be asking that question before you're in a well, contract this is, and also like, would on. we ever recommend to a client that they not be represented by an independent agent no under no circumstances will oh. we ever recommend that you need your own independent agent without a conflict of interest. Because, like, does this gal have somebody fighting for her now? 
She's screwed. Yeah. She's in escrow, and the guy that's and he's gonna like he's gonna talk pressure her. her. Yes, that it's all or good. she. Yeah. I would be surprised if she doesn't get pressured. I would be surprised if Chrissy doesn't call me back he and tell me targeted that her. agent has pressured my mom into taking this deal, and then I'm gonna get really. Then I'm gonna make I'll a phone call. call. Yeah, I'll we'll call. let Vanessa call. Okay, get so out of that contract. Let's talk about Tracy because it's kind of a similar deal. Okay. By the way, does her title insurance policy, with the <sighs> exception, you could drive a school bus through, cover her for that encroachment? No. No. Doesn't. Uh, does it cover if a lot wide adjustment is needed later on? It doesn't on? cover. Most residential policies do not cover that. Wow. 